My name's Jamie Heim, and I'm a air attack pilot for Bridger. I fly the Kodiak. This was my first season, actually. Uh, that's kind of an interesting story. I did five years in the Coast Guard, and I was on boats and all kinds of things with them. Um, got out, and I knew I wanted to use the GI Bill for something. Did a little brainstorming with my dad, and I ended up in aviation. I went to school in Vermont for four years for the degree program with the, with the GI Bill, and here I am. I'm going to be running the Mid-State Massive. It starts in New Hampshire and it goes basically across the state of Massachusetts. What got me started on it, I, my 30th birthday, I wanted to do a marathon and I was not a runner as a child. I didn't do track and field. I'm six miles in? No, I'm not. I'm, I'm 5.7 miles in, but there's, hold on. Let's flip this around. There's some of the devils. I'm beginning to understand why they call them that. Um, none of that. So I just, for some reason, had this crazy idea to run a marathon when I turned 30. And it was pretty brutal, but I finished it. Um, got through that. I did a couple more marathons after that. And somehow I've ended up here with the ultras. This will be my first 100. I've done a 50 a couple years ago. And that started at midnight and a blizzard hit. And my sister and I had some friends there. And the second I crossed that finish line, she looked at me and she was like, you're totally going to do the 100, aren't you? I'm like, yeah, I just finished this in a blizzard. And of course, I'm going to try the 100. So ultras are definitely a whole different animal than the marathon, just the training and time you have to put into it. The trail, yeah, my legs are hurting. This is just like ripping them up. Hmm. Well, pretty awesome view though, huh? But, um. It's a pretty good experience, I think, overall. A lot of highs and lows, and yeah, it's it's fun. I don't know. I'd rather be doing this than sitting on the couch watching Netflix, so. Yeah, that was a shocker. I remember that morning at Bridger, they, I thought we were getting together for, I don't know what kind of meeting, because I'm no, not normally in Bozeman, so yeah. I had no idea that that was coming. Um, at all. <laughs> I'm still pretty shocked by that. Uh, yeah, that d there was just a day in Grangeville where we had some really bad weather, some really high winds come up and it was like five hours of do I go, do I not go? And of course with those winds, the fire started picking up. So there was a lot of calls for us to go out and my air attack wasn't very comfortable. And the crosswinds were just too strong. So I elected to not go. And shortly thereafter, all of these other aircraft start taking off and you really sit there and beat yourself up. Like, well, should I still go? Or did I make the right choice? And it really was kind of a crappy, crappy couple of days for me even after that. Like, God, I wonder if I should made the right choice. But, um, you know, I think nothing changed. If you look at the winds, it, it was just, what changed is you sat around for five hours and you really want to go help. So you finally go. Yeah. But, Risk-wise, I was still like, well, but nothing's changed other than my attitude towards it, which isn't really a factor that I bring into the risk, you know, so. I, I made the right decision. It's still, it, it was, I think, a lot harder to stay on the ground than to get in the plane and go. But um, I definitely wasn't expecting anything like this to come of it. So it's just kind of another, um, really makes me feel like I'm working for such a good company. I am just, to know that they have my back like that is pretty awesome.